Wow, so the blowback against the governor of New Mexico's attempted gun grab, uh, or at least mm, suspension of the right to possess a firearm in the public, um, it continues. A federal judge has uh, uh, has expectedly struck down uh, her her edict, although everything she had in her executive order, she had a bunch of other stuff like. Uh, monthly inspections of gun stores uh, that will remain in place, but the the most egregious part of it, which was banning people from carrying a firearm, uh, that has been struck down officially. But it had been nullified by the local authorities, uh, the mayor, the chief of police, and the county sheriff all saying that this order would not be enforced. And this is particularly interesting because uh, these are all three Democrats uh, in a blue city, in a blue state, standing up against this. There have been uh, demonstrations in the streets while this order was active of people open carrying both rifles and pistols, and I would assume shotguns, um, in the streets in defiance of the governor's order. And, of course, the Republicans in the legislature who have no power calling her on her to be impeached, that certainly won't happen. I don't see that. Although the reaction against this, the, um, the way in which uh, the entire state seems to be willing to just cut her loose is quite interesting. I don't normally see this with Democrats. Normally they will circ circle the wagon uh, with their people. Then again, when have you ever seen a Republican um, be absolutely savaged by his own party either for doing something very bad policy-wise? You know, it, normally the party doesn't abandon uh, a a leader unless they do something that is just scandalous, like uh, I don't know. Uh, smoke crack off of uh, a toothless white man's belly or get caught on tape saying you can uh, grab women by their wherever uh, because they let you do it. Things like that is what usually will get a party to turn on a candidate. But in this case, it's actual substantive political differences. And uh, what's interesting here is that I have not seen a ton of Democrats saying, you know, no, I agree with what the governor's trying to do, uh, but she's going about it the wrong way. You know, it should be by executive order. We should pass a law saying that you can't carry guns, repeal, repealing open carry in this state and concealed carry. That's what we should do. I haven't heard that at all. In fact, to the contrary, um, the mayor of Albuquerque, again, the 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 Democrat capital of a Democrat state is saying that the legislature need, and the governor need to put their efforts instead of on this political theater um, and suspension of constitutional rights. They need to focus on fighting crime. You know, I mean, that's like the old 90s right wing position and I guess, you know, Clintonian position. But I have not heard uh, Democrats saying, you know, hey, I agree with the policy. I just don't like uh, the uh, the way in which it was carried out. I don't like the method. I don't like the, you know, the executive power here. They're just straight up saying, no, this is, this is not the way to do it. And of course, it's not like you had concealed carry holders um, who were going out and uh, murdering people on the streets of Albuquerque. Uh, Everyone knows that, that those are not the people who commit crime. And so the uh, the mayor is like enough of an adult to say, obviously, these people aren't the problem. We need to focus on the people who are actually committing crime and find a way to stop them. Now, I'm not saying that's going to work either, whatever they come up with. I'm not saying they're going to come up with good ideas, but it's just it's so strange. It's the opposite of what I would have expected. And so, um, you know, this could just be come down to uh, me being out of touch with uh, New Mexico's culture. You know, it could be that Mex New Mexico, maybe it's just like Vermont, where they all vote Democrat, but they like having their guns. That could be the case. Um, you know, it used to be quite common to have Democrat voters 
who liked guns. That didn't used to be rare in this country. Now, you know, if you if you want a gun, you're a fascist. And so I have to admit, I mean, I was I went into this story just looking for a reason um, to uh, to be a doomer. I mean, it's plain and simple. That was my attitude going into this, uh, and it looked really bad at the beginning. But things are actually working out okay. And to be honest, this is in line with the way I used to think. Like, pre-2020, I thought, oh, you know, they could never just grab everybody's guns because, you know, that would be, you know, they have to boil the frog. Um, they have to take away things slowly. And, you know, gun rights are like, you know, that's the one thing that people are really solid on. You know, they, they're expecting the government to want to come and take their guns. Everyone is expecting that. And so, you know, if you just come out and say it, people people are going to wise up. Um, and that's what happened here. People just said, no, you're not doing it. Now, I wish that had happened in 2020, but, you know, I guess... I guess with that, you know, people were not... It just so came out of nowhere. Nobody had ever been in that kind of a situation. And so even though it's obviously wrong on its face what happened, uh, people didn't, they didn't know how to react. And so they went with the flow. It's just, it was just the herd mentality. So if nothing else in this country, at least we will still have the Second Amendment. That seems to be something that people care about, which I'm glad. If there was anything that they cared about, you know, that's probably, if I, although it's not good to have no other rights and only have the Second Amendment. But <clears throat> at least as long as you've got the Second Amendment, there is a chance that people could take back their other rights. I mean, at this point, it almost feels like the Second Amendment is um, in better shape than the First Amendment. And I've never thought that the Second Amendment was in great shape in the United States. It's just that the First Amendment is so much under assault right now that, uh, you know, that's what I worry about more. I mean, I worry about that every day. I mean, how we see uh, um, old uh, Owen Schroyer getting his 60 days in. He wasn't the first and he won't be the last. You know, the Babylon Bee had a pretty funny headline. Uh, it was, uh, New Mexico governor suspends First Amendment to uh, tamp down on uh, criticism over the suspension of the Second Amendment. But... Is it really that ridiculous? No, I think that she would have a better chance of suspending the second, the First Amendment, if she said, you know, oh, I need to, I'm, I'm issuing an executive order against misinformation and malinformation. Malinformation is my favorite one. Malinformation is correct information that uh, makes the government look bad. I mean, I can't believe that they invented a term like that. Unironically, just shows how, how unself-aware. The regime truly is. But Stephanie uh, Lujan Grisham, it seems, um, she is maybe a sacrificial lamb. Uh, yeah, Zero Hedge is calling it a trial balloon. I think that's probably a accurate characterization. You have a relatively minor state um, that is not in danger of flipping Republican, but has a also has a Democrat governor who's not all that important. She's expendable. And this was an opportunity, you know, to see, hey, let's try and let's try. You know, they're not trying this in California where there are tens of millions of people, even though it might be more likely to succeed in California. If they fail in California, that's a bigger risk. OK, that would be worse than if they failed like here in New Mexico. So whether they succeed or fail, it's not that big of a deal, um, but it would give them good information. And uh, thankfully, the trial balloon has popped. So we win this round, although they still need to overturn the monthly inspections of gun stores because that's one weapon that not a lot of people talk about that especially the ATF has been using. I mean, gun, the Second Amendment is much worse. Um, under the four years of Trump and continuing since Biden was elected, um, the ATF has just been absolutely um, uh, savaging. Uh, the the right to bear arms in this country in uh, somewhat silent ways. And uh, their main tool has been revoking uh, FFLs, uh, shutting down gun stores. And so certainly these monthly inspections, that's what they'll be about. The ATF, and this isn't the ATF doing it, it's the state, but they're going to be doing this. They're learning from ATF tactics. The ATF would go into a gun store and look for any reason to shut them down. Um, just comb through everything, every piece of paperwork that they have in their entire place. 
and try and find something that they could use to shut it down. That's That was their job. That is the job of the ATF when they come knocking. And of course, they illegally seize information of buyers to form sort of a uh, an unofficial gun registry. And so who knows <laughs> what the state would, of New Mexico would be up to inspecting these places. Anyway, uh, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.